you know what the Salaf used to say? Kunna natasaddaq. We used to give sadaqa. Lianna yuriyan Allahu azza wa jalla uyuba mashayikhina. They used to go out before they came to the dars. They will give out money. So Allah does not show them the, the mistakes of their teachers. Or they don't want to see the sheikh's mistakes. Or his faults. So we'll give sadaqah. So Allah hides it from them and puts a veil between them and the students for their English. Imagine those who sit down to look for the mistake of the sheikh. Or mistake of the teacher. They pay sadaqah. They don't want to see it. They all they want Allah to bring their way is the love of the sheikh. And the respect of his. And to not see his mistakes or his faults. So, giving. The student should learn to give. The st- who's learning the Quran. The one who knows the Quran, the Mu'allim, should also be the one that gives. He should be one of the first to give. He's a path to the state. The teacher should not want everything to be sent his way. And the student should not want every, everything to be sent his way. وَمَكَارِمِ no. akhlaq. And brothers, wallahi, this is one point I think it's, it's essential, especially in the Western world. Etiquette has died out due to the countries and the places that we're in. We don't pick up good etiquette. Sah. We don't pick up good etiquette. You hear a brother, when talking to his sheikh, for instance, a sheikh, he will say to the sheikh, Yo! I want to ask you a question. The teacher will be, I'm busy right now. Can, go, can you ask me later? Now, brother, I want to ask you now. The teacher feels intimidated, scared. Okay, I'll ask the question. Ah, the way it's dealt with. Etiquette is so bad. The students from the back will shout whilst the teacher's talking. Open his legs. And cut the lesson for purposes and things that don't make. No reason behind it. No one knows what reason it is. The akhlaq is very bad. So the person who's carrying the Quran, actually the Quran has to change your life. When the people see the Quran in you, it has to change. Brothers come up and say, I have my mom's not a Muslim, she's not practicing. Oh, she's a Muslim, but she's not practicing. It's 80% of why those parents are not accepting what you're giving them is because they don't see it in you. She doesn't even see it in you. You're just saying everything. It is nothing on you. you first thing that, one of the first things that's needed from you is obedience of your parents. You don't even obey her. When you talk to her, Mom, please, please, stop. You silence her. She's your mom. She knows. Every mother knows. Every father knows that they have haq on you. So when you practice, they're waiting for a person who's soft, lean, kind, caring. You've left it, left that. The etiquette and the way you deal with your sisters and your brother members, your family members, is bad. It's the evil in that, in that which it can be. Who's going to take that knowledge from you? People won't take it from you. If our Prophet was said to, O oh Muhammad, وسلم, if you were hard and harsh and hard spoken, the companions would have left your surroundings. They would not have sit with you. You were soft. If you were hard in your speech and the way you conduct yourself towards the companions, they would, they would have left your surroundings. These were the people who Allah already chose them to be companions of the Prophet. They would leave it if they were to find hardship in the way he explained things to them. You have to be very soft. You also have to be brother. Soft towards the family members. Show them softness that you would not show an ordinary individual. So the etiquette of a person who's memorizing the Quran and I have to have is very important. It's very important, Ikhwani. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, Inna min akrabikum minni majlis an yawm al qiyamah. The one that is the closest to me gathering the day of judgment is Ahsanukum akhlaqa. The one who has the best etiquette. He's the closest to me, the win me to me the day of judgment. So with the Prophet, close with him, said, just due to, 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 to the etiquette. And because of evil etiquette is one of the things that the people, the Day of Judgment, they will take away from you your righteous actions. As the Prophet said, أَتَدْرُونَ مَنِ muflis? Do you guys know who a muflis is? A person who's bankrupt? Do you know who it is? A man who come, يَأْتِي بِالْحَسَنَاتِ Righteous actions he will come in. But what did he do? قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا He insulted them. He insulted this individual. The way he speaks to the brother. The brother's looking at him thinking, He's hurt. 
His brother doesn't care. Wa'alaikum salam. And the way he spoke to him. قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَ هَذَا He hit this one. He stole from this one. He backbited this one. He hit him physically. He hurt him. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said فَتُؤْخَذُ مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ The Muslim will just say to you Oh Rabb, today I am in a mess of hajjah. I mean so much need. I need actions. Oh Allah, take some actions of his from me. And that's it. They lose him so much just because of bad actions. Is that not true? You lost a lot of your deeds. The salah that you used to pray, the fajr that you paid in the masjid, the ta'ad that you came with, all of that you lost it because you couldn't carry a good etiquette. It's not small, Allah. Etiquette is very important in our religion. And it's the biggest thing in our religion and there's nothing higher than it. There's nothing at all in this religion that is higher than high etiquette. At all. Does anyone know anything better and higher? Huh? The shahada is good etiquette with Allah. The shahada itself is good etiquette with Allah. It's to bear witness that there's none worthy of worship. It's to not lie about Allah and say Allah is a child. It's etiquette itself. There's nothing. Al al qubba. It is the dome. And there's nothing higher than high etiquette. And when you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's worthy of worship, which is the tawheed, then that is you saying good, having good etiquette and akhlaq and adab with Allah. When there's nothing higher than etiquette. And the person has to know and has to put that in his mind. And good etiquette. And open face, smiling all the time. You see, brothers, Yawman Abu Sankam Tarira, all day. Every single day you think he lost a family member. <laughs> Every day is one face. Smiling, Ikhwani, Sadaqa, La tahkarinna min al ba'ru fi shay'a, Walau an talqa akhaqa bi wajhin talqa. Do not belittle a righteous action, even if it means to meet your brother with an open face. Smile, Akhi. So, brother, Akhi, they're scared. They're just naturally not the type of, when they see a brother, not, they think, they think it personal, they think there's something with you that you have against him. Just smile. That makes his day. It makes his day. Smile. وَطَلَاقَةِ الْوَجْهِ This is the way that the haqqa But there's brothers, everything has a ghulu and a taqsir Everything in this religion has a ghulu and a taqsir You can go overboard or you can have a shortcoming on it You can go overboard by doing what? By thinking that the smiling is laughing all the time, all the time. There's times when you're serious And you're not joking And there are times when you smile Some brothers think Some brothers assume that being pious is to have a serious tone of voice all the time and to always be straightforward. That's not the Sharia. And that's a ghulu in his other side. And another one that the person who always is smiling and always laughing and always joking is another type of extreme as well. The person has to make a path between those two. There are times when he's serious, when he sees a munkar, an evil action being done, he shouldn't smile. Is that talaqa to watch? Do you need it? You see a person drinking with their left. You, shish. you see a young boy who's wearing a football an arsenal or something and he's got a Christian sign on there. You shouldn't laugh. Your face should change. And ask the parent that's with him, what's this child wearing? And you should deal with it straight away. I remember my teacher, subhanAllah, in Somalia. He was in a dars one day, tafsir. A football, a boy with a football. Uh, uh, he had a football, uh, what's it called? Sure. Huh? Oh, I know what t-shirt is. <laughs> there's, another, there's another name to it. Kit. They had a football kit on. He's, this and everything. And he came into the class. I remember my sheikh in Somalia. When he came in, the sheikh, all we could see is the teacher just do this all day. All day he do this. Until somebody had to take that young kid out of the masjid. Ha. It's serious, ikhwani, wallah. Our kids are wearing things that have Christian signs on it. Sheikh Hussain ibn Taymiyyah in his kitab Iqtada of Salam al Mustaqim, he added it to be things that can take you out of, out of the fold of Islam. It's kufun bilal in Aladdin. For a person to honor and put to a Christian sign on, on his chest or in his. Very serious. And we buy our kids. What do you want, Daddy? Oh, uh, Daddy, I support this team. Support? You say, yeah. You go to a shop and you buy money for him to, get it, to wear this clothes. 
Very serious. So it is neat. That time you're not going to laugh for your kid. You're going to teach him. No, you're not going to wear this. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, ordered us to wear as, as, as Muslims. It's not our clothes. It's the clothes they wear, not us.